Hi everyone, so my name is Harry and today I'll be talking to you guys about um, how to write your physics IA. Um, at any point during the presentation, if you guys have any questions you'd, uh, you'd like to ask, just uh, unmute yourself and um, we can ask the question. Or you can just send me a message on Zoom and then I'll try to answer it uh, within the time limit. So anyways, uh, firstly, what the physics IA is. Um, this is the uh, official IB description of what the physics IA is, but really what it's saying is that the IA is um, a compulsory part of both SL and HL physics, so any of you taking physics will have to write an IA. And it's also saying it should be a display of the skills and knowledge obtained throughout your IB physics course. It just means the content that's um, that your investigation is centered around should be um, what you learned or what you will learn in your physics class at school. Um, and I'll go over that a bit more later. Um, so essentially the main difference between the physics IA and like an ordinary lab report really is that a lab report usually is mainly focused on a specific scientific phenomena and how you investigate that. Um, whereas the physics IA, it's revolved more around some personal aspects and the real life um, situation that you center your investigation around. Um, and I'll discuss exactly what that entails in the following slides. So firstly is the criteria for the physics IA. There are five criteria. Um, first is personal engagement, acceleration, analysis, evaluation, and communication. And they all add up to 24 marks total. So the first criterion is actually personal engagement. It's only worth two marks, but really it's a, quite an easy criterion to just kind of tick the box and get a free two marks really. So what you really have to demonstrate in this personal engagement is can usually be done in either one or two, um, uh, one or two paragraphs. Um, and that's usually included in your introduction section. Um, so what you really have to talk about in these in this paragraph is what inspired you to come up with the investigation or the research question and why the outcome of the investigation really matters to you personally. Um, so for example, my physics IA was about um, adjusting the tension force on a guitar string to try to tune it to a different frequency um, and really I justified my personal engagement for this topic um, since I'm a guitarist and I, and I talked about how one day I didn't have an E flat string and I want, and I tried to tune it with a, uh, another, uh, frequency string. And that got me wondering if I could just use one solid string to just tune it to all the other frequencies. Um, so the next criterion B is exploration. And this is actually worth six marks. So it's one of the more important criteria. Um, so really this exploration is all about, um, the research question, the background information, and the methodology. So firstly, the research question is really the question, the topic of your investigation that asks what the investigation is going to be revolved around. So a few things you have to clearly include in your research question is the independent variable, the dependent variable, and obviously the scientific phenomena involved in this investigation. So for example, my research question was, how does the magnitude of the tension force on a guitar string affect the frequency of a first harmonic standing wave on the string? So in this case, the tension force was my independent variable, the frequency was my de dependent variable, and the standing wave is my scientific phenomenon involved. So if you just follow those three, um, include those three ingredients, you should be fine with your research question. Um, next, the background information is where you provide the scientific information kind of necessary for an ordinary reader who doesn't have like a proper background in physics to really understand what's happening in the investigation and what the research question really is about. So in this section, you must not include the research that directly answers your research question, but rather information that's necessary for the reader to understand what it's about. So for the methodology, really the structure of this depends on what your teacher prefers or your marker prefers. Um, so some prefer it in like bullet points, some prefer it in just like a paragraph form. So do make sure to consult your teacher and um, tailor it to their preference because they're the ones that's going to be marking them. Um, it's always useful to include a picture or a diagram of your experimental setup. So when you're conducting your experiments, just take a photo of like your setup 
so that you can um, include it in your report. Um, students often forget to discuss like controlled variables and the most really important part is why it has to be controlled. You have to justify how these controlled variables can impact the outcome of your investigation. <clears throat> and these are also important because you can um, discuss them later in your evaluation section as well. Um, you also have to show some safety uh, considerations at the end of your methodologies usually. Um, and this is important for any really practical investigations uh, involving experimental procedures. So if you're considering doing like a purely theoretical or a database IA, um, this doesn't really apply to you, but I think the majority of um, you guys will be doing an experimental based IA. So you do have to include a safety consideration at the end of your methodology. So the next criteria is criterion C, um, uh, analysis, and it's also worth six marks, so it's quite important as well. So this is where you kind of analyze your qualitative and quantitative data that you collected from your experimental process. Um, so in terms of the qualitative observations, you really want to note only the significant ones that actually re are relevant to your experiment and those that actually affect your uh, outcome or your data trend. Um, you also have to discuss the accuracy of your data. So when you're plotting your graph, for example, you really want to display the uh, error bars, the R squared values, um, the trend line and stuff like that to clearly show that you took into account the accuracy of your data. And this also gives you some stuff to talk about in your evaluation as well. Um, you also have to um, consider the measurement uncertainty and just uncertainty propagation in general. Um, a lot of people get marks deducted by not performing uncertainty propagation properly or just not doing them at all, which is um, quite an easy and stupid way to lose marks. So make sure to do your uncertainty propagation. And you also want to include sample calculations of all the uh, process data um, you collected during your investigation. Um, and usually these sample calculations either go in your data analysis sections or your appendices. Um, and that also depends on your teacher's preference. So just follow whatever your teacher wants you to do. Right, so the next criterion is the evaluation, which is also worth six marks. So this is where you include your conclusion and your evaluation. Right, so if there's one thing I want you guys to uh, take away from this presentation today is to have a sentence at the start of your conclusion. So the first sentence in your conclusion should be a sentence that clearly answers your research question. And an important thing is to always refer to your data in your conclusion as well. So the data analysis you conducted in your previous part months uh, should have given you some sort of correlation between the dependent and independent variable. And then in the conclusion section, um, you kind of put that into the real life situation that your investigation is uh, centered on. Um, so you should make sure not to be redundant in your conclusion. So for example, in your analysis, you could have shown that A and B are positively correlated. And then in your conclusion, you take that uh, numerical um, data that you acquired from your data analysis and then put that into the perspective of the real life situation that you chose. Um, and then in the following conclusion paragraphs, you should support that conclusion or the conclusion you drew from the data with scientific research. So if you said that A and B are positively correlated, you need to show through scientific research why A and B have a positive correlation. Um, so these would be in your evaluations where you talk about your strengths and weaknesses um, and limitations and how you improve these or how you would fix them. Um, and really you only want to talk about two or maybe even three um, strong strengths and uh, strong weaknesses. You don't wanna be talking about a lot of um, strength and weaknesses. You really want to choose two each that are really strong and kind of evaluate them in detail. Um, and for the improvement and extensions, you really, the extensions especially should not be like a minor tweak to the investigation. Like you're just changing um, the independent variable from like salt to sugar or something like that. It should be something kind of different that is still relevant to the original investigation, but something that adds value to the original investigation. So the last criterion is criterion E, communication, which is worth four marks. And this 
this uh, criterion really is all about um, the formatting and like the structure of your IA. So that really depends on following what your teacher wants. Um, but it also revolves around like labeling your figures, um, uncertainty propagation and stuff like that. So some of the common mistakes that students always get um, deducted marks from is like not labeling figures, not including uncertainties in both raw and processed data tables. That's an important one. Um, not including error bars, not including sample calculations, uh, page numbers and stuff like that. So you really got to watch out for those when you're submitting your work. So in this slide, I want to talk about how you should kind of approach the uh, IA, like a step-by-step -step guide, so to say. Um, so first, you want to brainstorm topics that interest you. And what I mean by topics is more like um, you can choose certain real-life phenomena that um, are of interest to you. So for example, mine was like playing the guitar. Um, it can be like using a speaker or whatever you want. And then kind of think about the scientific phenomena that can be applied to that real life situation that interests you and then go from there. Or you can go the other way where you choose a topic that you really like from physics. So for example, if you're in interested in waves, for example, then you can kind of think of different real life situations that, can, that you can apply your knowledge of waves into and kind of go from there. And once you've decided on a topic or kind of decided on a few topics that you are interested in, you want to do some preliminary research and thinking into um, what scientific phenomena are involved exactly, um, how you're going to experiment. So you also have to think about how you're going to collect your data relevant to that investigation, right? So that's when you really want to investigate like what kind of resources you have at school and if it's possible to actually investigate at a high school level appropriate to the IB physics syllabus. Um, then you want to consult the teacher on your idea, see if they think it's appropriate, and also kind of check if your idea of how you're going to carry out your experiments is going to be feasible. So if they have the resources or the um, equipment to conduct your experiments, essentially. Um, and once you've done that, you want to really conduct like detailed research on the topic you've settled on. So in this stage, you really want to get an idea of... Um, what you want to get out of from the investigations, what your trend should look like, essentially. And this is a really good idea because um, I've seen a lot of students just jump right into their experiments and then realize they've done something horribly wrong. And by the time they've collected all their data, it's all rubbish and they only have like a week left to complete their IA and redo their experiments. So that's not always not a good idea. So you really want to conduct a lot of research before you jump in and kind of um, know what you're trying to find from your experiments. And then really you just conduct your experiments and then write your IA. Um, yeah. So some tips and tricks I'd like to give you guys for the IA is to not choose a topic that is too complicated. As I mentioned before, the IA must be um, dis like a display of the skills and knowledge you acquired during your IV course. So you don't want, you don't want to choose a topic that's way too complicated for the IB syllabus and that can actually get your marks deducted because that's kind of against what the IA is supposed to be. Um, also, you, before you set on a topic, you want to conduct enough research so that you know, like, at least briefly what the outcome should look like, which is what I just talked about, really, so that during your experiments, you kind of see if you're going in the right direction or not. Also, you want to process your data as you collect them. Um, because that way you can see like if there's a uh, major issue with your methodology if and the sooner you find that out the better really because you don't want to conduct all your trials and then at the end realize you're screwed because um, your data is all like messed up also lastly um, it's also not the end of the world if your data is not what it's supposed to look like um, I've had a friend who've had who's had uh, data that was very inaccurate but he um, scored a lot of points for their, his evaluation of the methodology and like discussing his uh, strengths and weaknesses. So always make sure to uh, think about the, the entire IA in general and not just the uh, scientific trend you're acquiring for your experiments. All right, so here are some possible IA ideas. So these are not something like you should 
follow exactly, but I'm just kind of trying to give you an idea of what an IA topic could be like. So one is like the optimal position to place a speaker at home. So depending on like the position of your speaker, you can kind of observe where the music would be uh, loudest or the most effectively kind of transferred. And this kind of touches upon like constructive and destructive interference of sound waves. So you really want to think about real life situations and the scientific phenomena involved at the same time. Uh, second idea is could be like an ideal material for a frying pan. Um, this will relate to unit three, which is thermal physics. So you can kind of discuss thermal conductivity and like specific heat capacity and how like certain materials have um, different rates of uh, increasing temperature. Um, Lastly, you could talk about like optimal position for a door to be placed to maximize your Wi-Fi connectivity. So for example, if your router, Wi-Fi router is in the living room, and you're trying to connect from your like own bedroom, um, the uh, diffraction of the waves is really important in terms of connectivity. So maybe you can investigate that um, using uh, your ideas of diffraction and like waves in general. Right, so that's what all I have prepared. So if any of you have any questions, now is kind of the time to ask. Um, so the structure would be somewhat like a lab report, but the criterion are structured in a way that you would start with your introduction um, and then your back introduction includes your research question and your justification of your personal engagement. And then you would go to your background information and then your methodology. So that's like criterion A and B, right? And then you move on to your uh, data analysis where you would present your raw data that you collected in your experiments. And then you would analyze them. Um, and then you move on to your conclusion where you refer to your data analysis, but also provide the scientific justification for, um, for the uh, conclusion you drew from the data analysis. And then you have your evaluation and then your extensions. And that would be it. So hypothesis, hypotheses are not necessarily um, required for your physics IA. Really, it's kind of like you choose your research question, and then in your introduction, you would kind of discuss briefly like how this would affect like your real life situation. So for example, if I go back to my guitar string example, um, when you tune a guitar, you're essentially just adjusting the... Uh, the tension on that guitar string. So I knew by adjusting the tension, there would be some sort of impact on the frequency being played. Um, but I didn't formulate a specific hypothesis where um, I would like say, if the tension increases, then the frequency of the note being played will increase as well. That's not necessarily required. But some teachers may require you to have a hypothesis. So um, it really depends on your teacher's digression, to be honest. Yep. So some people use like database for their IAs or sometimes they can be purely theoretical. Sometimes they use like simulation software as well. <laughs> 